Good morning, good, e good evening, wherever you may be, across the nation and around the world. Once again, you are listening to the VMware Community Roundtable Podcast. Today is May 24th, Friday, 2019, and I have my co-host, Corey Romero. Corey, how are you doing today? Doing great, Eric. How about yourself? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. It's, it's sunny and nice today. It's podcast number 478. How can you go wrong? How's the color of the bay? I know, right? Yeah, color blade is great. Came across the bridge on the way home. It's a uh, beautiful blue with a just a tint of green. Absolutely gorgeous day outside. I know we finally got some good California weather. Uh, John White's probably out there on <laughs> Friday enjoying it instead of coming in and being on the podcast. He's probably up. He's probably up north, just you know, two and a half hours north of us skiing. Yeah, that's right. There's still a lot of snow. You know, I was out in Pittsburgh <laughs> yeah. uh, for the uh, a hackathon for the P Pittsburgh VMUG UserCon, and flying over, about half of America is just blanketed with white snow. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Very good. On the show today, California, we Utah, have Colorado. Yeah. We have Mike Hume on the show today. Uh, he's Senior Director of VMware Cloud, and he's going to be talking about what's new with VMC and uh, some events coming up and basically give us the state of the world since he was on the show almost a year ago or maybe maybe three quarters of the year ago. So, Mike, welcome to the show. Always great to have you back. Thanks, Eric. Uh, it's great to be here, and uh, I'm coming to you from a remote location in Southern California. It's actually even sunnier and warmer than, uh, than what I saw yesterday in Palo Alto. So, you know, we've been having an endless winter here in California, so I'm glad to be uh, chasing the sun a little bit more and finding, uh, finding some heat down here. Well, well, thanks for dialing in and doing this special Friday podcast. We had to move it to Friday because the Pittsburgh VMUG user con was going on and we went to the hackathon, so shout out to everybody out there. Um, and also... We've got uh, VMworld coming up, so let me just do the dates, and then we'll we'll get to you, Mike. So just remember, Perfect. early bird registration opened on 0507, so it's open. Uh, global contact catalog opens on 0618. Early bird registration, uh, Europe, 0726. Let's see, schedule builder for US, 0616. Schedule Builder for Europe, 0924, and Conference USA, 0825, Conference Europe, 1104. So there we go. That's the news. Uh, other than the Bitnami stuff is still going out in the social media ecosphere, and we're good to go. That's all I got for news. Corey, you got any news, or should we get on with Mike? Yeah, we can get on with Mike. All right. Perfect. Perfect. So, Mike, why don't you tell us, give us the two-minute elevator pitch. Who are you, and how long you've been at VMware, and what do you do? Absolutely. So, yeah, thanks again. I'm, uh, so, Mike Hume, Senior Director for VMware Cloud. Um, I've been uh, back at VMware for about two and a half years, but all in I've been at VMware for uh, about 10 years. So, I still remember when we were uh, just a great uh, vSphere company with, uh, some, with some management on top, building out all the other product areas around the uh, EUC and networking and everything. And uh, for the last two years, um, I rejoined um, to really work on our cloud strategy um, as we were really resetting our agenda um, and building out this whole new direction that's led to the incredible portfolio that we have today. Great, great, great. Um, so we, we know that there are things coming up. Uh, we have uh, some cloud briefings that are going to be happening. Maybe you should tell us a little bit about where the industry is on v cloud for VMware right now. Uh, give us a couple minute rundown of the state of the, the products that we have. I know last year was all about VMC on AWS. I think that's expanded a little bit. So uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about where the cloud from VMware industry is for a few minutes and then we'll get into some of the other stuff. Yeah, that sounds great. So, I mean, Really, frankly, since I rejoined a couple of years ago, it, it's kind of amazing to see how far things have really come. Um, you know, and when we when we really started down this new path, um, cloud was really something that was adjacent to a lot of our core products. Um, everyone knew us for vSphere in the data center, 
but the cloud portfolio was really just getting off the ground. And today, just two short, two short years later, um, I think you can say very, very easily that cloud is really core to almost everything that we do. Um, so much of our portfolio, the one that people you know know and love, has really been expanded as probably the most you know widely distributed cloud platform in the world. Um, not just what we do in the data center in a private cloud environment, but what we're doing through VMware Cloud on AWS, um, through our VMware Cloud provider partners, um, and uh, and also out through VMware Cloud Verified, which is really the gold standard of those partners. So, um, looking at what's been happening with cloud, we've been expanding on the hybrid cloud path very cleanly. Um, we can talk a little bit more about what we mean by hybrid cloud and what's going on there. But we've also been expanding in this new area called multi-cloud, which is really about diverse infrastructure and diverse cloud providers and the kind of complexities we're seeing from customers there and, and how VMware can help to resolve a lot of that. And then this, uh, uh, the newest area and an area of a ton of investment is what we're doing around modern apps, in particular around uh, Kubernetes and uh, containers. So really kind of three pillars of a very unified strategy around cloud. Um, what we're finding is that with customers, you know, we're about 10 years into the cloud market, if you kind of factor in uh, when the, the big hyperscalers kind of came online. Right. And uh, there's been a ton of adoption around cloud. But what's shifting for our customers is that they're looking at these decisions, not about consumption or adoption of cloud, but really about cloud architecture. And so those three pillars that I outlined are really aligned to the architectural decisions that we see customers making. Uh, hybrid cloud architecture, uh, what, what they need from a technology and service standpoint there, um, a multi-cloud architecture, and then a cloud-native app architecture for modern apps. And, and I think that kind of frames it pretty well, Eric. Yeah, that's interesting. So maybe we should just take a minute to clarify hybrid versus multi. And I think most of us that have listened to this podcast know about modern arc application arc because we bring in Kate, uh, uh, VMware Kubernetes guys um, as well as uh, microservices. We've had discussions around that. But uh, clarify hybrid versus multi so everybody gets that straight in their head. Yeah, and it's, it's been sort of one of these interesting conversations and debates across a, a number of uh, teams in, in, out, in and outside of VMware. So by hybrid cloud, um, there's really emerging a very clean definition here. Um, it's a definition that VMware uses. We see it from our partners, um, even other vendors, um, customers, and major analysts. So hybrid cloud is really defined by private cloud, public cloud, and edge environments unified with consistent infrastructure and consistent operations. And by infrastructure, we're really looking at uh, compute storage and networking defined in software with cloud management. So that's a, a very um, standard definition, and it's sort of emerging as this new normal for our customers as they seek a, um, a, a broad and common resource pool that spans those three environments. You know, contrasting that is really what's happening in multi-cloud. And by multi-cloud, we really mean diverse infrastructure. So if you look at um, what that diversity can mean, it's you know utilizing uh, multiple public cloud vendors, but also layering in your hybrid cloud environment. So a hybrid cloud architecture combined with something you might have from AWS or Azure or Google or IBM, and uh, you know because the, of the inconsistencies there, the, what customers are really seeking there is a, is a layer of operations that allows them to use all of those environments um, and have things like security and governance, some automation, visibility, and resource control. Um, knowing that they can better control complexity and risk um, while tapping into whatever environment makes sense for them. That makes sense. So, Mike, one of the things that I'm noticing is that the definition of the cloud environment, whether it be hybrid or multi, is actually outstripping what IT practitioners can catch up with. So, for instance, just my own self, I've I've kind of got used to the hybrid cloud environment, but now I see uh, edge coming into that definition, and then multi-cloud is getting more complex. Um, how quick is this moving? Uh, it's moving incredibly fast, and I think this is the kind of things that you see in a lot of rapidly emerging markets. Um, you see these um, sort of micro markets sort of open up, and then they merge together and become bigger trends, and then those merge together and become these macro trends. And I think really at, at the highest level, um, cloud really is the trend. And what we're seeing is some 
some really interesting evolution around things like walls being broken down between the data center and the cloud to become the first generation of hybrid. You know, edge coming in as the scenario for remote offices or branch offices, areas where, um, you know, customers may not have a lot of IT support but need to have something on premises. And then that being absorbed into the hybrid cloud definition. Um, and then now um, we're starting to see these um, hyperscaler clouds with unique architectures start to be the new silos in the market. And, and the opportunity to break those down creates new opportunities for customers to build new kinds of applications that pull in unique services from uh, any type of cloud that they really want to. And so I think we'll, we'll sort of see this collision and redefinition of markets over time. And, and really, I think what, what VMware is trying to do is meet customers where they are, no matter what their specific goals are or levels of maturity. And some of our customers are still trying to get a lot more um, you know, capacity and, and, and efficiency out of their data center, but they want to know that the investments they're making on premises are part of a cloud strategy. And so really that's kind of where the, a lot of the, the work that we've done with um, VMware Cloud Foundation, uh, VMware Cloud on AWS and, and other um, cloud providers is really to create that pool of resources. Looking further though, there's all these great new opportunities to sort of redefine these silos into um, uh, just a huge set of resources for customers and significantly new opportunities in, in how they uh, uh, build and run and, and really create value for their, for their uh, businesses. Yeah, and I think this is where VMware has an advantage and can help the IT practitioner and the ecosystem as a whole, which is we already have uh, a hybrid cloud environment. We have technology there. And then as we're layering in technology, this this helps people come along with the journey. Instead of trying to bounce from one you know new technology to another new ne- technology, everybody has a cloud offering of one type or another, but they, they don't really plug in. In fact, it's it's hard to keep up with everything. Uh, where where VMware has this unique environment in that we already have a hybrid cloud environment, so adding and layering in technology for a multi-cloud, uh, it actually just helps you move your investment in your own knowledge forward, right? I was talking to a customer uh, where they do an on-prem off- offering that runs in vSphere, um, but they also have a cloud offering, uh, but customers don't generally like to go to the cloud offering. They choose the on-prem offering. But what he's seeing is he can offer expanded capacity with VMC where the cl- customer is willing to kind of move into vSphere, buy a solution, and then slowly add capacity uh, in VMC without having the customer freak out about security or network capability. Um, And then they tend to under-provision their on-prem environment. So the VMC actually helps them because it it allows them to expand capacity. So that's like a very basic implementation of a hybrid cloud environment, which is kind of where they're getting to. Yet the industry is bouncing all over with lots of different solutions. So I think VMware's solution here is actually unique in that it kind of scales out and grows logically. Yeah. Yeah. So so you're bringing up a couple of really interesting scenarios that we're seeing to be pretty common. I mean, first off, I mean, you know, VMware's customers, you know, they, they have built their own, you know, high performance data center environments and they have applications that are mission critical that have been running there for years. And, you know, the idea of cloud for them was often something that would be, you know, a, introducing a risk. You're looking at a new infrastructure, a new set of tools to manage, a new set of skills, maybe new people, new, you know, and moving into an environment that you didn't build yourself. So there's, you know, kind of a, uh, a little bit of a trust uh, barrier there as well. And, um, you know, the idea of rewriting a production app for the cloud, not only is it going to consume a massive amount of time, but the, the budget associated with rewriting the app would be pretty tremendous. And then finally, just the risk of, is this going to work as well as it's running already is a, is a pretty big leap. And, it's funny because I, I saw these kinds of hesitations, you know, years ago when we were just trying to convince customers to move mission critical apps from physical hardware to virtual environments. It, frankly, it, it was a big challenge for, for many of our customers, equally um, challenging to move to the cloud. But because of the strategy that we've been rolling out with VMware Cloud on AWS and our VMware Cloud Verified partners, uh, many, many others, you know, what we're offering is 
an environment in the cloud that is based on the same architecture and the same technology, but also the same tools and policies that you're running in the data center. So, you know, what you talked about is really a scale on demand scenario. And by us breaking down the walls between the data center and the cloud, uh, we're giving customers the freedom to really grow into the cloud for things like disaster recovery or, you know, temporary uh, capacity needs, whether it's a holiday period or a, a peak season for a customer. Um, or if a customer is looking to expand into a new region, let's say they're a U.S.-based company and they want to expand to the U.K., well, building a data center in the U.K. would be extremely expensive and would be one of the uh, more time-consuming things that they could do. Well, now they can have a fully operational VMware-based cloud environment on AWS or a couple of other partners, and they could just scale into that space and know that all the applications are going to run perfectly. They can move them using live migration, and they can manage them the way they've been running the data center. Yeah, when I laid this out to this guy that I was talking to, and he's a VP of engineering at the company, and he was looking at it, he was like a really thoughtful around yeah expanding and being able to run in a multi a true multi cloud environment from you know. If, AWS, from IBM, from even uh, Azure, right? Like this was uh, compelling to him. So we're here to talk about an uh, event that's going on because making sense of this, there's always opportunity to learn from VMware. So I hear you guys are having a briefing. Maybe we should talk a little bit about it. I hear it's going to be June 4th and people are going to register for it. So why don't you tell us a little bit about the, the briefing that's coming up. And just before we hit it, we'll just say, and we'll mention this a couple times, uh, if you want to register for this briefing, it's https calling slash slash cloudbriefing.cloud vmware.com so why don't you tell us a little bit about the briefing that's coming up on june 4th yeah perfect so thank you and um if uh, people have trouble with that url they can also find a link from vmware.com on the, uh, the home page banner and then also cloud.vmware.com which is our dedicated cloud site um so june 4th 8 a.m was when we'll start live streaming that event um, this is really, you know, an acknowledgement of just how much our cloud uh, strategy and our cloud portfolio has evolved. And so what we wanted to do was um, grab an opportunity to connect with our customers uh, and our partners and do so in a way that really just was focused on cloud. You know, VMworld, there's so many interesting topics and things that are going on there. So this is a, a cloud event. It'll be about 30 minutes in length. And then you'll have an opportunity afterwards to actually dive deeper into individual topics. If you really want to focus on modern apps, um, you can hear some extended discussions with the founders of Hectio, the guys that actually uh, wrote and, and really grew Kubernetes to where it is today. Um, if you want to hear an extended discussion with Kit Colbert talking about how virtualization has kind of led to where we are today with hybrid, there's a, a good long discussion there. And so what we wanted to do is just give people a picture of what we see as changing in the market and then really frame VMware's approach to what we think are the, the major challenges and opportunities. We've really structured it around these three architectural decisions, hybrid cloud architecture, multi-cloud, and then modern apps. And I think we cover really the basis for everyone there. You know, on the, on the hybrid cloud side, we're trying to help people, you know, migrate to the cloud much uh, more rapidly, uh, transforming uh, uh, data center, cloud, and, and edge into a single pool of, of resources that can be used much more freely. On the multi-cloud side, we really want to help customers understand what this next generation of multi-cloud can mean. You know, rather than wrestling with a diverse cloud environment across AWS, Azure, Google, VMware, we, we want to give people the tools to actually uh, leverage that to their advantage and actually be really powerful in how they take advantage of all the innovation out there. And on the modern app side, you know, Kubernetes is great. There's a ton of demand there. We know that this is the future of applications for the market, um, but we're stalled. We're, we're caught in this space where demand is really outstripping the capabilities of IT to support it. And VMware is making a huge investment into Kubernetes and, and next generation apps. And so we want to frame up uh, what we can do there. A lot of this is really letting you see the, 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 the big thinkers at VMware. So you're going to see... Um, some different faces. You know, Kit Colbert's pretty well known to folks, but a, a great thinker on where hybrid cloud is going. 
Uh, Joe Kinsella is the CTO of Cloud Health, and he's really driving our next generation multi cloud management platform. And then Joe Beta and Craig McClucky, again, you know, um, uh, pioneers of Kubernetes, uh, you know, the guys that really invented and, and built this up at Google, uh, founders of Heptio, and now part of the VMware family. So, uh, great um, insights from from these teams, and a great opportunity to really understand how VMware can help uh, you in your in your cloud journey and your cloud strategy. Yeah, I can't say enough that it's. It's important to educate yourself if you're in IT, or if you're a practitioner, if you're listening to this, uh, to keep up with the, the cloud education and take all the advantages you can just to kind of let this sink in. There's a new bits of information each time we run these things. Um, and, and I think it's starting it out there in the market. I was at, again, at another event in the Bay Area and somebody came up that I normally don't have conversa conversations with and they came up and they said, hey, we're looking at Kubernetes and you know, we we're looking at replacing our infrastructure and moving into modern apps. And we've been considering what platform to go to. And we heard that the uh, Heptios founders are there and that you guys are the guys to talk to now. And they, they actually said that what they've been coached is there's going to be two providers, uh, Kubernetes left uh, or in the industry maturing, Pepsi and Coke, one is going to be Red Hat with IBM, and then the other one is VMware. And I guess their consulting orgs just basically laid it out like that VMware and Red Hat are going to be the two that are doing this and owning most of the market, which I found interesting. I don't know if you believe it or not, but uh, yeah. certainly is uh, something that we're making inroads in when you're talking about the messaging. So uh, that's that's really neat. So 30 minutes, maybe an hour if you talk about question answering or uh, is there going to be any kind of live chat or is it basically just watch and go away? There's a little bit of interaction, but more more watch and, and, and learn. Um, you know, in the, uh, we're going to sort of give people a snapshot in 30 minutes. And then afterwards, you can view some extended uh, versions, extended content. Uh, we want to give people an opportunity to sort of see things. And 30 minutes is, you know, we know people are busy. We want to give them a, a really quick view into a very complete and, and, and pretty complex strategy. And then we want to give them the opportunity to dive a little bit deeper. So, you know, if you want to spend 15 minutes hearing about Kubernetes from Craig and Joe, you can do that. Um, and a lot of, a lot of great uh, resources, some... Uh, some customer stories if you're looking for a little bit of inspiration. Um, but, you know, I, I want to get back to your point around the, um, the Kubernetes side, which was an interesting one. The, um, you know, I think what it speaks to in terms of that uh, individual's prediction is that it's really the multi-cloud aspect. You know, all of the vendors that we work with now, you know, VMware is, is now core to AWS with our VMware Cloud on AWS solution. We're core to Azure with the newly announced um, Azure VMware solutions. We have a great relationship with IBM um, and uh, you know some some other relationships with Ali Cloud and, and others. And I think what you're seeing is that um, each of those vendors has great strengths, and some of them have very unique strengths. Um, but customers actually want to pull from all of them. And when you look at something like Kubernetes. The reason why uh, this person might have identified VMware and, and Red Hat is really, we're, uh, is, is from VMware's perspective, we do sit as the one that can unify across all those environments. And, you know, we've done this before. We did it as part of, um, you know, the data center um, uh, modernization uh, as a part of our, our first 10 years or 15 years as a business. Um, and then we're seeing it now. We're seeing that people love these clouds, but they actually want to access all of them. And I think whether it's Kubernetes or multi-cloud management and operations, this is the way that we help customers tap into all that great innovation out there. Right. And it's funny because they, uh, Pat once in a while and Sanjay talk about first act, second act, third act, right? That, that, that moving to the cloud would be VMware's you know, third act where our first act was compute. Uh, the second act was adding network and storage into that. And then the third act is moving to cloud. But I actually look at it and say, no, this is, this is, just, this is just IT. IT is always moving. And you know, <laughs> adding cloud in because somebody invented the concept of cloud, which really, if you look at it, VMware kind of helped in, invent this because of vMotion and being able to set things and abstract away from the hardware. Uh, this is just the evolution of IT, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really true. And um, I think it's a natural place for VMware to be. 
Um, and I think the, um, you know, I think because I've because of the time period I've had at, at VMware, what I what I'm really appreciating now is that the early days of cloud. I think whether it was you know whether it was partners or customers or you know uh, market influencers, is that they always wanted to sort of pick a side. Is it going to be you know on premises or in the cloud? It was an either or scenario. And really, what VMware's done is just said, hey, how about if we had all of it? How about if we help you? be successful in your data center while also building your cloud uh, strategy? And how about if we had it all work together and we're giving you access to incredible innovation from any vendor, you know, build on the things that you already have at your disposal, uh, leverage the teams and skills that are already working. Um, and I, so I think it's a, it's a really interesting time period for the market. And it's a time period that actually, um, it actually supports customers in a, in a much more effective way than some of these siloed investments or right. uh, these individualized architectures uh, that don't help customers. All right, good. So June 4th, make sure you guys go register. I'll repeat the URL here if I can go find it. It's cloudbriefing.cloud.vmware.com or you can just find it on vmware.com. June 4th. So with that, everybody go register for that. And then at the same time, VMworld is coming up. Are we going to do some stuff at uh, VMworld, I would assume? Yeah, it's pretty incredible. I mean, this, uh, this event will sort of tee up what you can expect at VMworld. And, um, you know, coming up at uh, that event, the U.S. Um, in the fall and then Barcelona in November uh, for the uh, VMworld Europe, um, really, the um, the opportunity there is to really see some pretty big milestones, and and they really fall along the three pillars that we just outlined. But it's pretty incredible how each of them are evolving really aggressively. Um, we're doing some great things inside to evolve the technologies that you know, uh, but we're also bringing in a lot of uh, new acquisitions, like you just saw uh, VMware complete, and you know companies like Cloud Health and Heptio are really um, uh, really influencing a lot of forward thinking inside of VMware. And, you know, one of the things that I found really interesting in the um, sort of directions of our portfolio is that we're really taking the things that are great about the on-premises environment, the things that VMware really pioneered, and bringing that to the cloud through our partner solution. So, you know, you get, you know, improved uh, business continuity, improved uh, support for mission-critical apps, disaster recovery, et cetera, in the cloud. But at the same time, we're really taking inspiration from things that worked in the cloud and bringing them back to the data center. So, you know, last year we announced uh, Project Dimension, which is a way of really delivering infrastructure as a service to the data center and to the edge. That is really a, you know, borrowing from cloud models and cloud services and really um, helping to evolve the uh, data center architecture while continuing to build on VMware. That's a, a good example of some things that you'll see really extend and expand. And, Expect to see more of this uh, sort of bi-directional innovation. Um, things from the data center helping to innovate and make the cloud better. Uh, elements of the cloud uh, coming back to the data center and making that environment stronger as well, uh, while continuing to have them linked together as one. Yeah, that's, that's a really good point. It gets back to my original point, which is there isn't first act, second act, third act. It's just it's just IT, and that there you shouldn't see an either or. or. It's just all of it. Yeah, that's I right, have, and you know we're uh, we're really committed to. That. Yeah, I have one more follow up with that, which is you might not know anything about this, but it's come up in a couple of conversations in the last week around Bitnami, and that Bitnami is kind of neat because it it packages up things and deploys them out on cloud. Do we see it, an opportunity to possibly uh, use this as um, something you can? put in your own app, uh, build your own application, and use Bitnami as a delivery mechanism to your own data center versus the clouds? Or is it just things that Bitnami is already prepackaged up? I don't know if you know this answer, but well, that's one of the things we've been thinking about is expanding the Bitnami capability around the uh, modern applications space to be able to be a component of that application delivery framework. Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. I'm, I, you know, I think there's uh, there's people more equipped than I to to kind of yeah. dive into that directional um, strategy. I'm just going to ask everybody I run into, you know, <laughs> can we do that with Bitnami? Hey, I, I, I guarantee the, guarantee the answer is out there. Um, 
I think the you know the one thing that I'm really excited about in general is just our overall commitment to you know this this next wave of applications and you know it it really fits into this any app any cloud um, you know mantra that we've had for years and um, you know we're not uh, we don't have any uh, you know we don't have any thoughts about uh, trying to 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 keep this just as a, a, a virtualized app alone we're really invest into containers and Kubernetes. And uh, we understand that, you know, these are going to run in a VMware environment. They're going to run um, in a, uh, a native cloud environment. But again, the opportunity for VMware is to help everyone um, take advantage of everything that's out there and to do so without, you know, extra complexity, slowing down efficiency, driving up costs and making things, you know, riskier and less secure. So uh, see that, you know, look for that same philosophy from VMware just applied in these new areas. Yeah, it, it is. It brings up an instance when we were in Pittsburgh at the hackathon. The winners uh, actually were able to write an app, build an app, deploy an app, uh, all in the three-hour time frame for the hackathon. Uh, I think it used a container and. It basically was in GitHub, deployed out, and the thing was just a cool app that allowed them to put in a Twitter ID and get a kind of a ranking for uh, that person's Twitter ID. But it was it was great code. It was you know built f quickly and deployed out in the cloud. And so the reality is, this is going to change how applications are built and delivered, and it's really going to be a uh, time-to-market acceleration, uh, which is, you know, continuous integration, that's this whole space, and VMware is clearly going to be part of that. Yeah, we, um, I mean, it, it really fits the philosophy of what we have for modern apps. We want people to be able to build rapidly, deploy anywhere, you know, manage consistently, um, you know, have it be part of your, you um, enterprise operations, but not have it be something that gets in the way of developers. We want developers to be really free to innovate. And um, frankly, you know, we're, it's, it's kind of interesting, but, you know, VMware, this 20-year-old, uh, you know, cloud infrastructure company, our goal is that you stop looking down at infrastructure and that you start looking up at apps and business outcomes. And so much of the investment that we're making around uh, hybrid, multi-cloud, and modern apps is focused on just that. We think that's where our customers win, and um, you know we're taking great inspiration uh, from that. The other thing I want to touch on is just the movement of IT practitioners almost into a step up into the architectural role, because as you get into this multi-cloud, hybrid cloud, modern application in environments, the work of laying out the architecture is really important, and I think there's more work in that, right? So less time provisioning machines, loading OSs, and keeping your data infrastructure running, and more time spent in architecture around hybrid, multi-modern applications. I mean, there's just more work in that space. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because I think it's a sign of where customers are really putting their value. And so, you know, the value for so long has been about really running and keeping the operations of an environment going, uh, you know, a VMware environment, a data center environment. And, you know, but that's not where the differentiation is. The differentiation is, being able to bring in incredible services and being able to, you know, drive innovation through developers or let developers do the things that they need to be successful. And so, you know, cloud, you really, you're able to push so much of the operations off to someone else, whether it's, you know, Amazon or, or Azure or Google or others. And in the data center, there's these new models like we have with Dimension where so much of those operations, you can really offload that to, to someone like VMware. And, um, and so what we're finding is that it's real, the value comes in how you build this architecture across multi-cloud, um, how you really define what the resources are and what the right ones are for you, and then how you drive governance um, and security and, and other guardrails around that. Um, but it's all aligned around business intent or business outcomes. So we think that's a, a great evolution. It's kind of, um, you know, for those of us that have been around in IT for a while, we always talked about this IT business relationship and, you know, maybe in the early 2000s, late 90s, it was something where there was a great divide uh, between these two organizations. And now more and more we're seeing stronger and stronger alignment. And, you know, uh, I think that uh, the way that cloud has evolved um, overall in this multi-cloud world is really going to help to drive that even uh, stronger bond between the two groups all aligned around singular goals. 
Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Well, it's always great to hear your perspective. And man, you guys have been doing tons of work. The number of acquisitions we've been doing, uh, g- great acquisitions, a lot of work for you guys, Mike. So thanks for keeping up the work and uh, coming on the show and letting us know what you guys are up to. Uh, any final words with regard to what people should be watching out for or anything they can do to help you guys? Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, it's, it's great to be here, and I appreciate that. I mean, just the, the final word is that, you know, it, it's incredible to see how far we've come in the two years, um, really rebuilding, resetting this strategy in this direction. Um, I think it's very clear that VMware is all in on the cloud, and uh, whether we're evolving existing things or, or bringing in, you know, new innovation, new points of view, um, keep pressing us on the things that are most uh, relevant and important for you. Actually, we take our inspiration from our customers. It's one of the things that's made VMware great for 20 years, um, and look for innovation along these three pillars, the hybrid cloud, multi-cloud, and modern apps. That is our push forward. Um, join us on June 4th to uh, hear uh, in, in detail how those strategies are moving forward, and then join us at VMworld. We'd love to see you in person. Uh, we'll have our Cloud City environment there again and talk to some experts, really understand how uh, your goals and strategies line up with where VMware's going. All right, all right, great, great. So again, cloudbriefing.cloud.vmware.com. Make sure you go register, go, go check it out. We're happy about that. Uh, and at the same time, thanks a lot, Mike. Mike, Senior Director of, of Cloud, I think that's what your title is, right? Senior Director of Cloud. You got it. Absolutely. That's right. That's a great thing, floating around the cloud. Uh, it's the Friday afternoon, so Tony Foster's on the call. We'll, we'll touch base on uh, the barbecue report coming up uh, uh, for the holiday weekend. It's Memorial Day weekend. So, so Tony Foster, how's it going? What do you think about barbecue for the weekend? It's going great. So if you're in the midsection of the country, you're going to have to do barbecue in the rain. Hopefully you don't have soggy food uh, as a result of it, but uh, it's Memorial Day here in the state, so definitely got to get out there and do some barbecuing. I'm thinking I might uh, do a uh, rack of ribs uh, this weekend. Yep, it's uh, can't go wrong with that. It's a traditional. If you got the uh, Memorial Day parades out there, uh, go visit a cemetery, pay respects, and then come back, have some great barbecue, uh, smoked barbecued ribs. Can't go wrong with that. Tony, do you do you boil them before you smoke them, or do you smoke them all day long? So I tend to be one of the people who smokes them all day long. Although I will typically do a uh, soak of them in apple juice. Um, it just gives them a really good flavor. Nice, nice, nice. Does the apple juice uh, caramelize at all, or does it just give it a flavor? It mostly gives it a flavor, and if you're from Kansas, uh, you know that Kansas uh, ribs, you put barbecue sauce on them. You get out the mop, and you mop them with barbecue sauce. Um, all right, all right, so that's great. You, it, it makes a very nice uh flavor combination with your uh, barbecue sauce. Corey Romero, you still on the call? He might have dropped off. I am here. Ah, any plans? I am here. You know what? I'm just going to relax. Uh, I, I will turn on the smoker, and uh, I might do something on Sunday we're talking about. Maybe maybe ribs. I also use applesauce of mine as well, Tony. It, uh, I actually use it inside tinfoil, so I'll wrap the rack in tinfoil and put some apple juice in there. It actually steams, and it actually breaks the meat down, and, uh, and you know, depending on how long you leave it in the, in the foil, it'll actually break it all the way down where it pulls off the bone or falls off the bone. Um, so, yeah, I, I use a similar technique as well. Love it. I'm thinking for the V expert part of this year, I think we're going to just go rent a couple of those big charcoal beds you can get, and uh, we're going to do our own barbecue. I think that's what we're going to do. You know what? I would absolutely love to cook for the V experts. That would be rad. That would be so. I think that would be wonderful. Yes. Yeah, I think we're going to do that. All right. Uh, Mike Hume, thanks for joining us on this Friday. I hope you have a great time wherever you are in your hidden location on vacation. And uh, we'll see you on June 4th.
And with that, we're going to go get some barbecue and have a vacation weekend. We'll be back again next Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Thanks for this special edition of the Community Podcast on Friday. Talk to you guys soon.